and welcome back in the last video we removed the oil pan gasket slash windage tray they're all one piece and uh, that was the final bit of disassembly that we had on this motor and now we're going to start to put new parts in it so I wanted to show you again I showed this briefly when uh, one of the very first videos we were going over all the parts that we had for this build so it's a comp cams cam for a replacement just hopefully you can see that sticker there came in from ordered the the original kit I shouldn't say the original kit but the upgrade kit which included the lifters cam valve springs uh, retainers for the springs the shims and the spring seats uh, as well as the hardened push rods all came in as a kit uh, from the tuner and you can see the details on the cam there and the fact that it was uh, it's been profiled to work with a, a 6.4 hemi with a pro charger if you remember this engine is also uh, supercharged via pro charger with a phase limiter which you saw us install in a previous video and 0.625 lift springs um, uh, and those were the pack springs that you saw us installing earlier uh, with all the shims and everything so just to kind of reiterate the kit came with the new springs the spring seats the spring retainers the spring shims the new roller lifters and the new cam uh, I just want to I pulled out a set of the lifters here so I can show you the part number that's the part number again the lifters came with the kit now a lot of individuals uh, call these Hellcat lifters and um, really what they are are the non-MDS version of the, uh, my understanding is they're just the non-MDS version of the updated lifter. Like you can see on the side of that, hopefully you can see those nice big needle bearings in there. So it's the upgraded style lifter, but you'll notice there's no hole. And the side of these like there is with an MDS lifter I just want to put this back inside the holder here there's a fair amount of uh, lube that comes on these from the factory I'm rather surprised and just to compare that with a MDS lifter if you remember you saw this in a in a previous video and you'll see that uh, one set of lifters off each side that we pulled in two of the lifters have these holes in it which a hole in it from my understanding is got a little pin in it that collapses and then allows the lifter to kind of collapse in on itself and uh, what we're putting in will be four lifters on each side all non mds so what i'm going to do next is we're going to get the cam out we're going to just going to inspect it briefly uh, and then i'm going to start to get this cam lubed up and get it ready to install into our engine i'll get you in the tripod and try to get a very similar shot to what it looked like when we took the cam out but for the, our assembly lube of choice is going to be this permatex uh, ultra slick engine assembly lube it's kind of red in color. I've seen quite an individuals use this. It seems to stick really well. Uh, and uh, if I remember correctly, when I looked this up on Permatex's site, it was one of the ones that was suggested if, you're, if it's going to be something that you're going to be assembling and it may be a little while yet before you actually uh, start the engine up. Uh, I've seen others use other similar types of engine assembly lube. You know, it, it's your engine, it's your preference. If you would rather use something other than Permatex, I'm not saying that you have to. I'm just merely stating that this is the, this is the product that I'll be using. So we're gonna get the cam lubed up, we'll get it installed, and then we'll get our lifters uh, installed next. So I'm hoping at the end of this video, we'll have our cam in, we'll have our lifter, lifters in, and then we'll be able to uh, go on to the next piece. So just to show you the front of the engine here. So what I would like to do after the cam and the lifters are in is to then put uh, the timing setup back on the front of the motor. 
once we have the timing set up in place, uh, then get the uh, mounting surface uh, where the head gasket is going to go on the block, uh, get it prepped, try to clean off any excess residue, and see about getting the heads prepped uh, for install. But a uh, little bit of rambling there. I'll go ahead and uh, and shut the or uh, stop the video at this point. Get you mounted in an, into a tripod, and I'll bring you back. So real quick, I thought it might be interesting to kind of see old and new cams side by side before we get this installed. Maybe you can spot some of the differences in it. One difference that uh, I noticed is that this is the newer comp cams one here on this side. This is our factory original on this side. You see the spaces between the lobes, you know, there it's still rough kind of unpolished, unmachined metal. But you'll see on the camp, comp, cam, comp cams one that even between the lobes, it's been worked and polished. Beautiful. Uh, just thought it may have been interesting to kind of see them side by side. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into the details about cams because I am not a cam expert by any stretch of the imagination. There are others out there that have done videos on cam swaps that can go into much, much more detail about the differences between the two cams as far as its difference in lift and duration uh, for the valves based on the numbers on the cam. Um, like I said, I'm not a cam individual at all, so I'm not even going to attempt to try to explain it. But what I will do now is cut the video. I'm going to get you propped up into the engine bay, and then uh, we'll get this, uh, we'll lubricate the snot out of this cam, and we'll see about getting it installed. Bring you back in a bit. And welcome back. Uh, let's make sure that we're recording, and we are. Okay, we got you plugged into power. You can probably see my foot straddling the sway bar. I'm just putting some lube on this cam now. This stuff looks like strawberry syrup it's nice and sticky yeah it strings like um, stringy like uh, like honey almost I don't know if you can see that hopefully you can see that well in the video but this is all i'm doing i'm just putting putting a line of uh, assembly lube on this and just working it all around these lobes trying to make sure that we've got everything thoroughly covered in snot it's probably using a lot more than I actually needed but you know what I don't care I'd rather this have the protection that it needs on that first startup than not than not have enough See if I can get you to see that. Watch this. You see how it strings? <laughs> it's just some sticky stuff, which is good. Okay. Let's 
see what we got. put some a little bit more lube on that I may have to move you so I can get into into position to get this thing seated all the way It's too slippery now I can't grab it okay hold on I gotta change out some gloves here uh, so I can get onto this cam and hopefully they gave you a pretty good demonstration there I gotta I gotta move you out of the way so I can get in here and work with this but uh, I'll bring you back in a second and welcome back so I just want to show you that we did get our cam in and you'll notice I did temporarily put the phaser back on it just so I can get a little bit extra perch on it. Um, not that I was forceful with it, but um, just going in, uh, just getting it to the, get in the front of that cam to clear that bearing, I put some extra lube on the front of that uh, cam lobe as you saw. And what I needed to do was just kind of just briefly shift it from side to side as you see me doing here and I couldn't do that with just the bolt alone once I did that it finished and you saw that little bit of space it had it finished sliding right in and just like everyone says you can see that spins very very nicely very very fluent I can tell that it's on that assembly lube yeah, I don't see any rough spots in that or anything. That 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 feels nice. So we've got that in there at this point. And uh, I can show you that uh, we use probably about a quarter of the bottle. It's probably a bit much to use, but like I said before, I don't care. I'd rather there be too much on something like that than not enough at all. So what we're going to do next is that we're going to get our lifters in uh, and then we'll uh, I'm going to do the same treatment on them I'm going to put a little bit of that same red assembly lube on the head of the roller for the lifter as well as the body of the lifter and basically just kind of use it to coat these lifter bores that they'll go into and uh Let's see, where are you at? Yeah, it might be a little bit difficult for you to see the lifter bores, but I'll bring you back when we do one of the lifter bores and you'll see what I mean. But for now, yeah, you can see there's a assembly lube dripping a lot of kinds of stuff right now. But again, that's fine. I don't care. Lube's lube. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab one of the lifter packs. I'm sorry, yep. Uh, and uh, I'm going to bring you back. Uh, I'll probably do the two that are here on the passenger side front first. I'll, I'll get the tripod repositioned. I'll, I'll bring you back for that. See you in a bit. And welcome back. So as promised, I've got you on the passenger side of the motor. And hopefully you can see that. But we've taken that same engine assembly lube and I've dropped uh, basically smeared it all around the top of the roller try to get inside of the bearings between the bearing and the top of the lifter and that little cavity that you see there and then smeared a bunch of it also on the the outside walls of where they're going to slide into the bore so again it's probably an unnecessary step 
uh, because these do come lubricated from the factory, but again, uh, better safe than sorry because it's going to be a little bit before we're up to the point where we start it. And I didn't want to put these in there and have the factory oil that they had these protected with to kind of, you know, slowly run off over time. Okay. So I'm just going to take this assembly as it is. I've got the little, little hopefully you can see that, got this little hump part paste facing up. We're just going to line our lifters up, get them started in the bores, slide everything in and there we go. That is one set of lifters. Once we get them all in, we'll come in and tighten down and torque our retaining bolt that you see there. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera because no need to show me do all four because it would be just repetitive. Uh, one thing also that we did do since we did have our phaser temporarily installed was I went ahead and just put the cam uh, into the 12 o'clock up position with the timing mark. So the, the, cam, the top cam is in, uh, is in timing position at this point. Uh, again, not that I think that's necessary. I, I just figured it'd be a good idea to have that sitting where it needed to sit. And then that way we can uh, get those uh, lifters installed. But I'm going to proceed with that. I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to take the remaining three sets, uh, lube them up with the same assembly lube, and we'll get them installed. Bring you back in a bit. And welcome back. As you can see, we've got all of our uh, lifters installed at this point. We have our holders for our lifters, which is that captive bolt in the center we were showing you earlier. That's in, let me verify that. I believe that is an eight millimeter bolt. And just looking at, yep, that is an eight millimeter bolt. And per the manual, uh, it gets torqued to nine foot pounds. Um, always verify uh, the torque measurements for your engine. Uh, don't take what I say in this video as being gospel. I'm just going by what the book says it should be for this particular uh, 6.4 so just to just to put out put that out there always Double and triple check your measurements. You, you don't want to snap a bolt off in such a way You know makes for a bad day, but uh, with that being said the holders are in they're torqued at this point uh, I'm gonna work on getting that uh, uh, Temporary uh, mounting of that phaser off so we can get our thrust plate back on and at least get that uh, torqued down and then I'll kind of reevaluate things. Uh, I may end the video here uh, just in an effort to try to keep the videos a bit smaller in size and, until we get to some of the bigger stuff that, uh, you know, needs to be maybe 30 or 40 minutes. But um, at a minimum, I'll get that phaser off of there. We'll get the thrust plate installed. Uh, I'll, I'll bring you back when I sh I'll bring you back and show you that. And then once we get that accomplished, like I said, I'll probably call it a video at that point, and then I'll start up a new one, and then we'll start working on the getting the timing components uh, back on the front of this motor. Uh, with that being said, uh, I'll uh, I'll pause it now, and I'll bring you back in a second. And welcome back. Just gonna go ahead and put this thrust plate on. Uh, there's only one way this thrust plate can go on. You'll notice that the uh, where the bolts go in, it's been uh, concaved, or I should say countersunk. Uh, so that way when you put these bolts in and tighten them down, they stay flush with the cover. Now this is, if you bag and tag like I do, this is where uh, some of that effort starts to pay off. Because you know, I can quickly just go to the bag that we labeled uh, camshaft thrust plate. And it contains the thrust plate and the, all the accompanying bolts in you know, one convenient location. Uh, these bolts get torqued to 106 inch-pounds uh, per the manual. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, set you down and uh, get you, uh, go ahead and get this thrust plate on and when we get it all, uh, get it all torqued in, we'll, we'll bring you back. But uh, you know, just to kind of show you, again, that thrust plate is going to go on this direction with the countersunk or beveled edges facing out so the bolts can sit flush so it's just going to sit just like that 
and then we'll get our bolts in and we'll get it torqued down and uh, we'll bring it back. And welcome back. As you can see, we've got our thrust plate on and torqued. And uh, uh, just to also to mention that these are a T30 torques. Um, I believe I also mentioned that when we took this plate off, but just in case I didn't, these are T30 torques. They were torqued at 106 inch pounds per the manual. And the way the manual wanted, wanted me to do it was in this kind of crisscross sequence. So one, two, three, four. Again, that was one, two, three, four. Just kind of a standard crisscross pattern to make sure you're, you're torquing it down evenly. So I got it torqued down once. And then I went through and repeated the pattern again, just to make sure that it was uh, still within torque specs. So what I think I'm going to do at this point is that I'll, I'll call this one a video. So in this video, as you're well aware, we got our new cam installed. We got our new um, lifters installed and torqued. We got our thrust plate reinstalled uh, and torqued as well. So in the next video, we'll continue on uh, with the front of the motor. Uh, we'll get the phaser on as well as the lower timing gear, get everything in time, uh, which will include the tensioner and the guide. And we'll just continue to build and work uh, on, the, on the front of this motor here. Uh, now, I'm doing the front of the work here because it's going to kind of tie into the previous video when we were just kind of debating how we're going to handle the oil pan because uh, again in order to get the, the the pickup tube mounted and get the oil pan in place they actually have you lifting up a little bit on the engine to give you the extra clearance and we were able to drop the oil pan out without lifting the engine but it's going to kind of have to go together a little bit like a jenga puzzle because those uh three four pieces of, of rtv silicone that we we're referring to go right down there the edges where aluminum meets steel so one in the back where i believe it's the uh, rear main seal uh that's kind of in an aluminum housing meets the steel block and up here up front where the timing covers aluminum meets the steel uh body here uh, you have you know a little strip of silicone just to help uh, seal up any imperfections or differences in the in the two mating surfaces so uh, I think I got a plan on uh, how we're gonna handle it uh, because the windage tray has windage tray slash seal has to go up first then you mount the pickup tube and then you can put the oil pan in uh, because that RTV is not there remember to seal the seal to the oil pan it's there to again you know fill up any imperfections that it may come from where steel meets the aluminum on the front timing cover and uh, and on the back of the engine so I, i've got an ideal on that one uh, i'll i'll bring you along uh once we get started in on that but uh that'll probably be about two videos from now because the the next video will be us just installing the timing gear and, and getting uh and getting everything in, in time at that point but uh, we're making headway. It's nice to see. We're finally putting some uh, new parts on this, uh, on this engine. And uh, I thank you for watching. Bring you back on the next one. Bye.